Hello, welcome again. We'll start with the 8th chapter for G.C. Leong and we'll talk about the topic of limestone and chalk landforms. Now, let's talk about what is limestone. So, we can say limestone is basically an organic compound which is sedimentary in origin and it's basically by the accumulation of corals usually that we say you have limestone topography. A pure limestone would be found as calcium carbonate. Now this calcium carbonate when reacts with water forms calcium hydroxide and leaves behind carbon dioxide and this calcium hydroxide is water soluble. So if you have the limestone topography you would see the dissolution or the action of water takes place very quickly in the limestone topographies. However, under certain topographies if you have magnesium along with calcium carbonate we call that topography as a topography with dolomite. So that's the difference between limestone topography and a dolomite topography. These topographies are also known as cast topographies. The cast is a name derived from uh, the region of cast in Yugoslavia where you have the slopes that have been broken down and predominantly a kind of lime, uh, limestone topography that's seen. Now what is very interesting in a limestone topography, let's understand that. So if we look onto the limestone topography, what happens is you have a stream that is running over. This is let's say a landmass and on the top of the landmass you have the stream that runs. Now suddenly what happens due to the limestone topography, this stream disappears or goes underground and after let's say miles or miles more than miles it re-emerges back. So this stream that was previously here is no more seen on the top of the surface and suddenly it reappears and this region where it reappears is known as a spring or resurgence. So spring or resurgence is again very important to understand when we talk about limestone topography. Two important terms that we will discuss while limestone topography is the Griggs and the Clints. So Clints are basically the rectangular blocks as you can see in this image. So when you have the river that passes or the water that passes, you have joints that are created. These in-depth joints are known as Griggs. However, this rectangular landmass that remains is known as Clints. So we understand what is Clints and what is Griggs. Griggs are commonly seen as a result of chemical weathering. So when you have the chemical weathering that affects this region, you have formation of Griggs that takes place. Now whatever we are talking so far is the topography that's seen on the surface. So this is what we see on the surface of a limestone topography. But as we said, when the river was flowing on the top, you had the Griggs and the Clints that were formed. But this river goes down and when it moves down, it forms a kind of caves that could be seen. And these formation of caves lead to the underground topography or we also call that as subterrane topography. So we'll understand this subterrane topography uh, with the various features that are formed there. But before that, on the surface itself, we saw that we have formation of Griggs, we have formation of Clints. Besides that, what happens is, on the surface, you have rainwater that falls and because of the rainwater, you have small hole that develop. This hole is known as sinkhole. Now what happens is there are two or more sinkholes that collapse to form a bigger hole and this bigger hole would be known as a swallow hole. This swallow hole further enlarges to form Uvala which is further bigger than a swallow hole and so let's say Uvala is around miles long. However, in the regions of Yugoslavia, we have it with hundreds of miles long depressions that are seen. Those are known as polge. So that's a kind of hierarchical order. The smaller ones is sinkholes, then swallow holes, uvala and polge. Now you have examples from various regions across the world. So sinkholes examples are the gapping hill in Yorkshire. So it's mainly by the solvent action as we talked about how calcium carbonate reacts with water. When you have 
the rooftop that collapses you have gorge that is formed now as we said you have river that is flowing in this river suddenly disappears into the underground topography now it starts to erode the underground topography and whatever rock pieces are there it erodes that let's say this much section is eroded now what happens is slowly and gradually the small layer or the small thin layer that remains between the rooftop and the cave again breaks off and there is a kind of deep gorge that is created a good example of the limestone gorge is the cheddar gorge that could be seen swallow holes again collapse to form doline these jaw line form uvala and then pulch so you have five series in this so sinkhole swallow hole jaw lines uvala and pulch so those are the features that we see and this is how we understand you have a small sinkhole that develops you have the resurgence of the streams that are seen which are appearing as uh, springs the river that goes down forms a cave structure in the underground topography and where you have the bedrock that collapses you have a gorge formation so those are the things that appear on the surface going down what happens is you have a structure of cave that is formed in certain manner the things that originate or the accumulations that we can see from the bottom of the feature are known as stalagmites those from the top are known as stalactites and when the stalactites and stalagmites collapse or join together these both keep growing in size they form the pillar structure which is seen here now a good way to remember what is the difference between stalactite and stalagmite is in a stalagmite you have g and this d you can relate as ground so what originates from ground is stalagmite and what originates or comes from the rooftop is stalactite so that's the best way to remember the stalagmites which originate from the ground are smaller rounder and much more fatter as compared to the stalactites which are much more thinner appear as pinnacles and are depositions that could be seen on the rooftop now here we have a diagram that shows the various features within the cave so as you can see you have the pinnacles dropping down which is the stalactites you have smaller fat rounded material seen here is stalagmites the flow of the material which is seen here is known as flow stone the column or the pillar is one where you have the stalactites and stalagmites that join together a falling uh, thing like similar to a kind of curtain in appearance is known as drapery and then you have very thin particles that are seen from the rooftop which are known as straws so those are the common features of an uh, common depositional features in a crust uh, topography now crust topography you have numerous caves that are seen now what could be a good question here could be the name of the cave and where they are located so you just need to know those and remember those so batu caves in kuala lumpur malaysia you have mehmet caves in america uh, in kenchuki then you have uh, carlsbad cave in new mexico america then you have poljana caves in yugoslavia so those are some of the famous caves similarly you have some of the famous limestone regions across the world mainly in south france caucasus then you have in the britain yorkshire and derbyshire as pennies then you have kenchuki in america yukton peninsula in mexico and then cockpit country in jamaica so those are the common limestone regions across the world now what are the human activities that could be seen in a limestone topography limestone topography is mainly barren you don't have much vegetation the soil is very thin the porosity of the soil is very high surface drainage is usually absent because the river disappears into the underground topography the vegetation as we said is very difficult since the soil is very thin in this region poor grass and some stuff turf could be seen in this region in the tropical areas however if you have a limestone topography there could be luxurious growth of vegetation due to abundant rainfall in that region scattered settlements are seen in this area with very less population a very interesting feature is lead is one of the minerals that occurs in combination with limestone so this re these regions are rich in lead deposition 
Again, uh, this material from limestone, what we derive, is used in cement industry. So, uh, nearby areas have cement industry. That's again important uh, aspect that is seen. The next is chalk. Now, chalk lime, the chalk topography is somewhat different, or the landforms formed by chalk are somewhat different from the limestone landforms. Here you do not have much surface drainage that is seen. So drainage is seen only when you have the rainfall and then it's dry for the other months. So when you have the dry regions, you have a kind of depression or valley that is formed, which are known as combs. Uh, these are small rounded, uh, then you have small rounded hills in the regions of South and Southeast England, which are also known as downs in North France. The rock is mainly friable, so as it is friable, swallow holes do not develop in this region. So that's one of the important characteristics of chalk topography. In the chalk la uh, landforms, you do not have prominent swallow holes that are seen. So with this we cover the 8th chapter uh, which talks about the limestone and the cast topography. If you have any doubts, leave those as comment below the video. We'll be covering the upcoming lectures in the further classes. So do subscribe. If you have any doubts, feel free to contact us. Have a very good day ahead.